Ba ông con bong sai ta. Ờ vậy đi. Nó mới lên được. Bị chạy nó to thế này mà. Vi su cái đó. Vi su. Hun sai na bao. Mấy cá này. Hun sai na bao. Nó lục mi long muốn. Lơ vi su à. Ba 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 ba. Cái này chú đi chú đi sạt. Nó lên video ban. Nó này là dân vi chu chu ơi phi đô heo và dân cá cá nó bán. ไม่จูจูไม่จูจูไม่จูจูไม่จูจูไม่จูจูไม่จูจูไม่จูจูไม่จูจูไม่จูจูไม่จูจูไม่จูจูไม่จูจูไม่จูจูไม่จูจูไ
mát mát anh bùi phải chạy giấy vào đi anh rồi thằng nào thằng bán bao phát mày nhở ở đâu Mặt mặt Nhưng sao Nói lại Nói lại À Điện sư à, Điện sư bà Nàng ơi lô Phật nhiên Sao mà gì Như mà Màu này mà chỗ luôn Chủ môi bọc hồn Cô lạc cô Cứ thà Màu ạ toàn Chúng thịt mẹ Lấy chạp màu Bà đá hai Bạn mà chụp chụp Vì hai Nhưng Ngày ní Sao mai chết nạc Như những bạn Rút luôn chúng tôi bỏ bồn cùng coi như thế nào Mà chúng tôi bỏ bồn như thế nào Nghĩa là bây Chết 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 thì bình chấp ấy Nơi thì nơi Phổ rê ní hai dương nơi thịt tiết nơi Nơi bởi thế bởi ráng kia miễn phư Cách của người thịt bóng phá đi nên Ngay khi mà phê bóng mũi Hai nơi Ô xa lý đôi thịt ngay phê bây Chẳng bà dương rút luôn Bác nghĩa nên muốn nâng Mình thịt bóng đi vọt ra bao lục tiên Dạy tì xong xì Đã bây chỗ tờ bởi thế cảm chí Hai tụi bác nên chấp đá màu ai Thả tầng ngoam dương Cơm cơm đá hai lên bọn đó là Bọn nơi nơi ạ xì hay Dương thả nó nó bán chạy Thì hay chìm ra dương mùi tình luôn Thả nó nằm dương mùi tình luôn Bạn chỗ tờ đó sọc mai hai Bạn chỗ tờ đó sọc mai hai Bạn làm ra nơi tạm trông bởi tuổi đại Thì bọn nhà chất bán đá là đi Dương mà chúc chung thiên nơi bởi thế cửa đó Đã bây ช่วยบอลบอลบอลบอลนึกได้ก็ได้จังสบายใจนะที่บ้านสบายใจบ้านจูงออกเนี่ยไอ้ข้างลูกเทียนซองซีวัดแต่ช่วยข้างเราทำ
การชุบมาตรกรรมนี่คือบ้านชมเจ้าดำพ่อเราจะมาเราเราก็เรียนนักวัดกบพุ่มไทยเจ้ามาบราบราที่มันต้องมันต้องยังใช้หลงพ่อหลงพ่อออกคนไหนเจ้าพ่อทำเบียร์ไหนพยายามเจ้าเยอะมาช่วยกันตั้งปีละตั้งนาเวตลอบนักไทยที่กบพุ่มนึกยังมาช่วยกันปีไทยก็ยังสังคูก็ยังเราว่าโคราลงพูบ้านประชุมไทยกลางงี้ยังมีการประชุมยืมจงรอไทยจงรอพลังสมัยที่ไปใช้กรุ๊ปนี้กันเลยจงรอคนสุขึ้นยืมเงินกรุ๊ปโน้นไทยที่ประมูลวิจิกาเนี่ยสมองคุณบอกเป็นสายบอลก่อนบอกบอกไม่ต้องซ้อมไปบอลพูดมาการนี้บอกการนี้บอกการบอกบอกสู้สู้ไว้มาอันนี้สิยิ่งตุ้งตื้อยิ่งประมาณเจ้าหนี้บ้านยิ่งเจ้าบ้านช่วยบอมก้อนไอ้เจ้าหมอเบี่ยมริกรัตตะสักบ้างเจ้าหมอนั่งทำไปโจวปฏิกรรมไปบอมบูนบุยมุยจังเจ้าหนึ่งกระเรนนะวันวันโจวปฏิกรรมมุยนะมาปฏิกรรมเด็กทุ่มทำไปเตรียมเตี้ยที่สัญญากรงปาลีโจทย์ไงที่บอกไปไปตาจอมมีภาษามันเอ้มีภาษามันเนาะมาจีบมาวันนาเอาเคยบ้างดับจงบอดมาส่งแต่ไปจุดลงให้วันนาบ้างบ้างเคยกดกัดมาตั้งพิจิตรมาบ้างบ้างมาจุดเจอไปหายกดมาไปดูหายมือไปบ้างส่งเจอไปปารีสู้บงโพมจีบมาทำไมได้ถึงไปมาจุดนี้มาจุดนี้ก็เอาคนนี้ปัตกรรมบ้านเออมีคนมีคนมาตีไปบ้างปฏิกรรมระบบคุยคุยในอะไรผมให้ปีเยอะจ้าจ้าเฮ้ยคนไทยเยอะมันไทยเต็มรูมิ้นตุ้มแมงตุ้มแมงเยอะสุดทั้งท่าคนไทยมันรอยชามเต็มเดือดยืนทรามแต่มันไทยเต็มยืนแมงลงใส่ดิสเดียมช่วงไหนวะไอ้ปกติเชียร์ดูเชียร์ชนะป้าสัมภูชิตเต้นตรงกลางสมองคุณสุดสาบรีดีบ้างมาตีมาตั้งจุ่มลูกบุกไอ้บอมบอมเชียร์พระทุ่มได้เนื้อสุดทุ่มแบบมีนสุดไรพี่บอกไว้ตั้งอ่านเลยนะคือสมบัยใจจุ่มจุ่มเนี่ยจับปีมนุษย์ปีเด็กแรงใจมีเด็กเนี่ยปีดวงอยู่ใบโกมีโตได้บ้างจังคนทั้งสิ้นเอาพวกวัดน้อยเสียม
เราโชคว่าแข่งเมื่อเย็นว่าแข่งในช่วงไล่จ้าระบบในการสร้างเงินเงินกลางรับโดยที่ผู้จัดการทั้งนั้นไม่ผิดบุญไข่ผู้จัดการชนะผิดบุญกับบุญทางบุญนี้ว่าส่งออกกันบ้างให้เด็กชมบ้านจุดเรียบจังบ้างอะไรดีซาแต่มาเอาเงินมาจังเหมือนยงแผลให้ทางตีหนึ่งตีนะตีหนึ่งตีบ้านเงินดีซาเยอะเงินแผลกาบ้านส่งรถติดสัวคงคนมาเรียบบ้านออกต้นบ้านกำลังสร้างมาเก็บแค่นี้บ้านปัจจุบันจะแม่นปัจจุบันเพิ่มที่ข้างหน้าบ้านเป็นหัวมือบอลมาต่อสู้กันไหมเพื่อนยืนมันต้องเจ็บเต้บ้าตะกี้ยืนตะออกนี่ว่าแฮตไอยืนมันตายไอหมดลุกจนมวยตับตุ๊กตับตะกี้เอาดอกไปเนี่ยเราไปจนโอเคยืนจีตะกี้ตะกี้มาหัวออกนี่ว่าแฮตไอหมดตายโอเคทุกคนสุดยืนมันไอจงไปเอาแกมเลยมันแบนสมัยจะได้ยืนอยู่มันแบนเสียกับแกมมันสกุลแบนยืนสกุลไอบอลบาดเจ็บซัวบางคนอมปู
bóng pro bóng sợi đây nơi tì ni cái nhóm mau tì ni cứ nhóm pin chất nâng smart chất nâng ca cho room nơi bàn tập cam ni để xài nhóm trong bàn cam là đồ mùi đòi miền phía chụp điện thoại một phần hai nhóm mau là anh về thời gian nó pin ni có nhóm trong chai cùng lê nơi vẫn tích chúng tôi này hôm nay đây là miền bắc sầm rạp nhóm nhóm sầm xua từ bóng bóng tha ตาบังโอนกับจอมสมโคนแบบนี้บังโอนไปโตมาได้ก็บังโอนได้ดิอ๋อตรึงมุดแห่งใดยังมันอาจตัวควักมาอีกยังมันอาจจะเริ่มอ
คือมกปีอเมริกันนาตาในปรังออสเตรเลียโอเชียนี้ไอจะปนกรีจะได้ดิคือเรื่องไอจะบันตายมวยจะคือมวยได้กาบีช่วยนังมาปนยังแข่งขนมช่วยนักดังดองขนาดปังโอเชียเอาเมียนไก่กาเพอตูดกระไดเอาหนึ่งมีคนในวัดนี้บานประสบกับเพียบสมพอคนสมครบเรียนกันกระทำมันมีบางคนนะแต่จำดูความสนใจมาตีการพิจารณาที่บอลออกไปประกอบตัวรวมปัจจัยสิ่งอย่างไรในการปฏิบัติการทั้งยูรีชิ้นเช็ดตุ้งไอโซมันจะมีชิ้นหนึ่งที่เชื่อมต่อกันในสมุทรสิ่งนี้มันจะที่กับหนึ่งเมียนมันจะอยู่บางมีจำนวนประกันบางคนแต่บางทีเดี๋ยวเราจะใช้แต่สปีดเช่นนี้ที่ในตัวนี้ส่อข้างบนจะเป็นของเงินที่สูงได้ในเรื่องของเงินเยอะที่เราไม่ได้เราไม่ได้ก็ไม่ได้เงินที่นี้ประกันบางคนบางทีโอ้ช่วยหนึ่งเรื่องจีโอ้ที่นี่ทุกอย่างที่เขาพูดเยอะเขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะเขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาพูดเยอะที่เขาไปขนมจัดวัดกับกระทำบอมโอนอ็อกนี้คือรูปแบบนี้มาให้ที่บอมโอนอ็อกนี้มีการพอกจัดอีกรายการเชิญก็พออยู่ที่นี้ทั้งจังหวัดทุกเจ้าหน้าที่ตัวชุมนุมทุกแม่ทั้งคนเจ้าหน้าที่ตัวชุมนุมทุกแม่ทั้งคนเจ้าหน้าที่ตัวชุมนุมทุกแม่ทั้งคนเจ้าหน้าที่ตัวชุมนุมทุกแม่ทั้งคนเจ้าหน้าที่ตัวชุมนุมทุกแม่ทั้งคนเจ้าหน้าที่ตัวชุมนุมทุกแม่ทั้งคนเจ้าหน้าที่ตัวชุมนุมทุกแม่ทั้งคนเจ้าหน้าที่ตัวชุมนุมทุกแม่ทั้งคนเจ้าหน้าที่ตัวชุมนุมทุกแม่ใต้สมัยเอ่อความเว้นคือความในทางแผนที่เกิดสมัยใหม่เนี่ยนะคุณเขียนเดี๋ยวนี้เขาจะทำบุญใหญ่สอบอ่อพุทธเซนทำบุญชีวานะก็นะทุกคนตัวพุทธเซนสอบทำบุญใหญ่สุดที่จะเลยท่านแทนที่จะดีนี่ก็สูงด้วยไอ้ผู้ใหญ่ให้ความบางเรื่องความน่าพาบางคนในเมาพิพิธกรรมวิจัยมันโครงการในทางปฏิบัติคือเพื่อจะนำเงินการมันเป็นจัดจมูกหนึ่งระบบแบบนั้นกระพงเป็นทางกับคำพูดยังเอ่อชิมจังไงจังไงมีสระดูใช่ไหมจังไงมีสระดูใช่ไหมจังไงมีสระดูใช่ไหมจังไงมีสระดูใช่ไหมจังไงมีสระดูใช่ไหมจังไงมีสระดูใช่ไหมจังไงมีสระดูใช่ไหมจังไงมีสระดูใช่ไหมจังไงมีสระดูใช่ไหม회사여러분들의사업지지하고회사님물러나고카부제유지지역때까지함께하겠습니다감사합니다관능루옹근해주모이영광내주방주모이로법발가그런품비예요감사합니다유튜브내방통맹금어제민가바보도상대속지 Also in the criminal law of Cambodia, there are some very vague terms that I'll express that I'll explain in just a moment. Speak. Ba, okay. I like Wang Po. Ma, got a. You mean Chun Chit? Ba, got Chun Chit. Like Thai. Got a little Chun Chit. Got a little. I'm just got to a man who just had a gun. Ba, okay. Got a gun. Got a gun. Got a gun. So we have a Chun Chit. That gives the police and the government a lot of authority to say something you did that I didn't like. That's endangering an institution. That's a crime. Today I'm here to show my solidarity with the Cambodian people. Ngay đi 
There are also laws that affect civil society organizations and non-governmental organizations. Organizations like UCAM, if UCAM were in Cambodia. One part of this law says that NGOs have to be neutral about political parties. And these groups say they don't know what it means. I've been together for about six months in Thailand. I've been together for about six months in Thailand. I've been together for about six months in Thailand. And he used to tell me about his country. I've been together for about six months in Thailand. Because of him, I know about Angkor Wat. I was at the court next call Angkor Wat. Because of him, I know how beautiful is Cambodia. I was at the court next call Angkor Wat. I was at the court next call Angkor Wat. So, uh, really, really, I wish you guys to have uh, the best democracy, freedom, and good governance in your country. But today, some of the talk that come from Prime, the young Song Chungpo, Osman, Sok Son, the Pierre, Nung Lati, the Pierre, 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 the To cause national insecurity. Spartan Go, I, I am not going to talk about the Pierre, 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 the and the government has used this law to arrest people who oppose the government based on things that they say online. And I'm really proud to join you today. Thank you. Thank you so much. And within just months of that new law, our State Department reported that at least three people had been arrested for insulting the king. As you may know, the government of Cambodia controls most of the media sources in the country.
the government shut down the Cambodia daily. And it shut down radio stations that were broadcasting Voice of America. <laughs> The State Department said that courts are interpreting the prohibition on incitement. Um, that, that making that a crime, are uh, interpreting that broadly and threatening to prosecute opposition figures for incitement simply because they're saying, vote and you can change your government. <laughs> He's 70 years old, and they charged him with espionage. And he said, who can I be, who am I spying for? <laughs>
And the Supreme Court made this decision soon before the July 2018 elections. And the CNRP was the strongest opposition party that could have challenged Prime Minister Hun Sen's party. Human Rights Watch said that this decision by the Supreme Court of Cambodia killed democracy in Cambodia. <laughs> One of the co-founders of the CNRP, Kem Soka, was arrested. And other leaders of the CNRP had to leave Cambodia. It was not safe for them to stay. They fear that they will be arrested if they return to their homeland. They fear that they will be charged with espionage or collaborating with the CIA, for example. But this decision of the Supreme Court of Cambodia was just the first step in a restriction on political rights and freedom of association in Cambodia. Uh, 
Tambahin aki tempat nai setul yang ada di sini. In the 2018 elections, the Cambodian People's Party won all 125 seats in the National Assembly. The CPP also overwhelmingly controls the Senate in Cambodia. The Special Rapporteur in her report last month commented that when one political party completely dominates the parliament, as it does in Cambodia, there are serious repercussions for democracy and the enjoyment of political rights. The United States State Department noted that most embassies in Cambodia refused to participate in election observing last year. Also, international observers like the Carter Center and the Asian Network for Free Elections refused to participate in monitoring. And you might ask, why would they refuse to monitor the elections? They said that the election lacked basic assurances of credibility. They didn't want to lend their presence to give it any signal that it might be a credible election because they could tell it was not. So what happened on election day? Well, we know the CPP had an overwhelming victory. Nearly 7 million Cambodians went to the polls. But interestingly, 600,000 ballots were deemed invalid. In 2013, the last time there was a national election, just 100,000 ballots were deemed invalid. So we don't know if it was corruption that people were that they were not counting those ballots, or maybe it was the way for the voters to express that they were not happy with the elections, so they decided to cast an invalid ballot on purpose. There were also problems with the 2017 elections in Cambodia. These were elections at the commune level. The CNRP in these elections received 44% of the vote. This was before the Supreme Court's decision. Over 5,000 CNRP members were elected in 2017. But, but after the Supreme Court's decision, they were either removed from office or they had to change their allegiance to the CPP. As a result, the CPP now controls over 95% of the seats in government at the commune level. 
บางทีในขณะบางการลำนายบางตัวนะอย่างเช่นยังเก้าสปาเรอยนะ There were also elections in May of this year. These were elections for the provincial, municipal, and district governments. But these are indirect elections. We don't have all of the citizens of Cambodia going to the polls. Instead, the people who vote are the people who are elected at the commune level. And remember those 5,000 CNRP people who were elected at the commune level were kicked out. And they were, and they were replaced by CPP people who weren't elected. So when those people voted earlier in May this year, the CPP won 98% of the seats. Of the 4,114 seats that were elected in May 2019, just 80 are held by people who belong to parties other than the CPP. The special rapporteur tried to give the government of Cambodia credit. They did change a law at the end of last year. This law said that the CNRP members who had been dissolved from the Supreme Court decision could seek restoration of their political rights. They could seek to be able to allow to, to participate in elections and political life again. But they can't participate as members of the CNRP. And they can only request to have their political rights restored. Who gets to decide whether their political rights are, are restored? The Prime Minister. So when you're going to ask your political opponent if you can have your political rights restored, you know that it's not going to be a fair process. So far, only nine members of the CNRP have successfully used this process to have their political rights restored. And the special rapporteur points out there's still no remedy for those more than 5,000 CNRP members who were elected in 2017 and then were dismissed from office. The special rapporteur pointed out in particular her concern about the conditions for Kem Soka. She said generally she was very happy that the government of Cambodia cooperated with her visits and allowed her to travel around the country and meet with people. But 
she was not allowed to have a confidential interview with Kim Soha. Now, there has been progress in his case. As of September 9th, 2019, he was no longer in jail. But he is under house arrest. That means he is not allowed to meet with any foreigners. He, he can't leave the area around his house. He can't meet with any former CNRP members. And he can't conduct any political activities. The Ministry of Justice told the special rapporteur that this judicial supervision or house arrest he's under could be indefinite. <laughs> Essentially, he's still being detained and he's never had a trial. He's never been found guilty of anything. Under Cambodian law, a person may not be detained for longer than 180 days without trial. The United States State Department also observed in its most recent report that there, under Cambodian law, there is no legal basis for house arrest. There's no such thing under Cambodian law. And it's not just the former CNRP leaders in Cambodia who are endangered, it's the people who fled Cambodia also. Some of those CNRP leaders held a meeting in January of this year. <coughs> then in March, Cambodian officials issued arrest warrants for them. <coughs> Sam Rainsy, who's the acting president, and seven other party leaders were issued arrest warrants. <coughs> <coughs> they were charged with plotting against the government and incitement, again, this very vague term. And there's been police or court action against over 140 former CNRP members and elected officials at the subnational level. The final area that we talked about in our report, but I'll skip over it for the interest of time and to give our interpreter a break, <laughs> is the issue of civil society space and human rights defenders in Cambodia. <laughs> But most troubling is that people who want to promote human rights in Cambodia are facing arrests and harassment. So the picture in, of human rights in Cambodia is not bright. But you'll remember I said that the government of Cambodia made 173 promises. 
Particularly when it's so dangerous for people to speak out and criticize the government in Cambodia, it's important for people outside of Cambodia to step up and speak out. And the advocates for human rights will be happy to collaborate with people inside Cambodia or people in the diaspora who want to engage in that advocacy. Here are some examples of the promises the Cambodian government made in June. Canada made this recommendation that Cambodia agreed to take. Strengthen democratic participation by guaranteeing the independence of the media and establishing a safe and enabling environment for civil society and trade unions and by fostering the full participation of opposition parties in the next communal, senatorial, and legislative elections. That's a very big promise for political freedom in Cambodia. And if we get signals that the Cambodian government is not going to keep its promises, then we need to remind the government of Cambodia that it had a choice. It did not need to accept this recommendation from Cambodia or from Canada, and it chose to accept that recommendation. And we can go to the government of Canada and to other governments of the world and say, help us help the government of Cambodia keep its promise. Here's another promise. This was a recommendation from the United States of America. The United States of America recommended that Cambodia immediately remove all undue restrictions on civil society. And restrictions on independent media. Uh, 
Thank including you. by withdrawing the interministerial decision known as Prakas number 170 on digital expression. <laughs> Now, in June, the government of Cambodia had a choice. They could have said, no, we won't do that, but they agreed to do it. They <laughs> promised. So now Cambodians in the diaspora and Cambodians in Cambodia can turn to the government to say, you promised to the United States and to the world that you would change these laws Let's see it happen. This process at the United Nations happens every five years. So this last time it happened on January uh, 30th, 2019. Next time will be in 2024. And just like we did a report last time, we can do a report next time to show whether Cambodia kept its promises. It will be up to us not just to monitor whether things happen, but to press the government to keep those promises. But we don't need to wait until 2024. <laughs> In fact, next year, the Human Rights Committee that's responsible for civil and political rights will review Cambodia's record. <laughs> so we'll have the chance to submit two reports to that committee next year. <laughs> So if you or your friends or family or relatives back home want to contribute to those reports and tell the Human Rights Committee what's happening on the ground in Cambodia, we're happy to collaborate with you. Because the government of Cambodia does care about its reputation on the international stage. So even if they don't directly listen to the people of Cambodia, they may listen to what other governments say to them at the United Nations. <laughs> And we can give them a chance to succeed. In closing, <coughs> the promises of 1991 and the peace agreements included promises and commitments about human rights. Those promises were renewed in June of 2019. But just as in 1991, it was not only an end, but also a beginning of a long path, we are now beginning new steps on the path toward building human rights in Cambodia. The 
Advocates for Human Rights stands ready to work with UCAM and other Cambodians in the diaspora and in Cambodia to hold the Cambodian government accountable for its promises. <laughs> I welcome any questions you might have, um, and I thank you for your attention. Okay, I have a question regarding the uh, one, the three promises uh, that uh, the Cambodian government promised. Uh, is there a way that we can uh, get this information, or you have a website that we, or you can send to uh, the organizers, and then the organizers can share with us all these 173 promises? <laughs> I'd be happy to do that. I can send them to David maybe on Monday, or if there's somebody else who's a better contact, I can send them by email on Monday. Uh, the committee for Paris Accord in Minnesota will give you the email and you can send it to them. Hello. Have you known that uh, November 9, the returning of CNRP led by uh, acting President Samarancy, what do you, you want to join them to report human rights and that type of what, 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 what would you want to do? I'm very aware that these people affiliated with the CNRP may be risking their freedom by taking those steps. So. I would leave it to them to decide what they feel safe doing, and the Advocates for Human Rights is ready to provide whatever assistance it can in the field of human rights. So if they want to give us information to share in our reports, we can, um, but uh, our first concern is their safety and security. So there are maybe nine of us that uh អាមពីកាតាខ្ញុំបារម្ភពីរឿងអ្នកដែលធ្វើដំណើរធ្វើនិពន្ធនិវត្តជាមួយគណៈបាទសង្គ្រោះជាតិនិងប្រជាជនទ
Thank you so much for your coming to yeah, report everything for us here. Uh, my question is, do you believe the Cambodian government has the goodwill and integrity to implement what they promise? I think we need to give the government the opportunity to prove itself one way or the other. And we need to press the government to go in the right way. I recognize it's very frustrating because it, things, it seems like things are getting worse and not better. But when things get worse, that means more of us outside of Cambodia need to step up and speak out. Because the government of Cambodia may be trying to make the voices of people in Cambodia quieter and quieter. Our role is not to speak for them, but to amplify their voices so they can be heard. And I'll say another diaspora group that the Advocates for Human Rights has worked with for a long time is diaspora groups from Ethiopia. Just two years ago, they would have felt as frustrated as you are feeling today. But two weeks ago, their new prime minister was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts to transform the country on a road toward respect for human rights. And it was in part the credit of the Ethiopians outside of Ethiopia who kept pressing and pressing for reform and respect for human rights that he was able to come to power. So we can't give up on Cambodia. Maybe two years from now, the new Prime Minister of Cambodia will be receiving a Nobel Peace Prize for his human rights work. Thank you for your answer and your encouragement. So, ตาบ่าวปู่มีสมนูไอ้เต้ซูมปีกอดไอ้สมจัดเซสมนูมาขย่ำดังชาย
Yeah. Question is, is, I am a U.S. citizen, so I go and say Cambodia, and the government of Cambodia would accuse me of espionage or something like that. If I got arrested, how would you be able to help me? So the Advocates for Human Rights does not have an office in Cambodia, but um, one important question is whether you have only U.S. citizenship or whether you have dual citizenship in Cambodia and the United States. Um, Advocates for Human Rights, or Mil Karya, I don't know if they come here today. But there's a new way of Japan to talk to you. If you have dual citizenship, if you're a citizen of Cambodia and of the United States, and you get into trouble in Cambodia, the United States Embassy won't help you. But if you have U.S. citizenship and don't have Cambodian citizenship and get into trouble in Cambodia, the U.S. Embassy is supposed to help you. We also have a toolkit of resources for anyone working on human rights anywhere in the world about organizations they can turn to for help if they get in trouble. There are two organizations that specialize in giving advice to human rights defenders who might be at risk they give them advice for how to reduce the risk that they would get into trouble. And they can provide help if you do get into trouble. You can also, as a U.S. citizen, have you or your family members reach out to your elected officials in the Senate and the House of Representatives to work with the State Department to provide you with help. One, I have one more question. I can get to know you. Now I just realized that we have dual citizenship, Cambodian and American. So we were thinking that, yeah, when we go back, then the United States would help us to, to, to find a way to, uh, to get away from the uh, risking position. But now you told us that we we cannot rely on because we have dual citizenship. But uh, my children is uh, are born here and they have to be American citizen. What can they do to help us? No, so now we can do that for him to get the guy before. I can have him get the land up to the top of my new banana. I have a bunch of my two year man, but I will go. Kill me as a jet pain, you know? Look at that. I don't die by the time. It, and I'm not saying you shouldn't go to Cambodia if you have dual citizenship. No, we still go. <laughs> you, you, you should probably reach out to your elected officials before you go yeah. to explain your status and to say that you're concerned about your safety. And it's possible that the U.S. Embassy can still provide you with some support. I don't know.
this week we we went to see Dr. Um, Senator Smith and the Senator Klobuchar, and then they provide us some assistance. But it will come in, so we don't know what is going to happen. But we thank you for all the information that shared with us. This is very important. <laughs> Question is uh, how the international community or superpower from the I mean the Western power can help over to the Cambodian government because right now they behind by the another uh, superpower too like China and uh, so uh, how how uh, we can do that to solve the problem. ซุปซุปมอกุนเนี่ยบ้านที่ชวนเพื่อเตรียมที่เซตโลกเราเยอะแต่ออริจินัลเนี่ยเตรียมที่อ่าอ่าสากุมันตราเชียร์อ่าใน
chương trình các tác phẩm của chương trình này thì tôi thưa cho nên là bây giờ tôi cứ nông cái cao thì ở chùa ta hai ta nông nhân hai cao ban đầu ở bên này cái nắp bắp cái bông bịch chuột này cái nắp cam ta sẽ nuôi nuôi ông ta ra bịch chuột because the pressure isn't coming only from China in one direction. Pressure is coming from a lot of other sources in other directions. And you're right that China has a lot of influence. <laughs> And China itself does not have a lot of respect for human rights. But there are many other countries in the world that care about what's happening in Cambodia and want Cambodia to improve. Those countries have Cambodian diaspora populations that send remittances back home, that come back and visit. Those countries are giving foreign assistance to Cambodia. And those countries are home to many large international businesses that do business with and in Cambodia. So we need to think creatively about all the different ways to pressure the Cambodian government to respect its human rights obligations. <coughs> This is a question from my friend on Facebook. He asked, could there be an, any intervention from the U.S. government in case a violent erupted during the presence of Som Reng Si in Cambodia? So I'm going to read one more time. You, you, you probably can't can hear what I said. Yeah. Could there be any intervention from the U.S. government in case a violence erupted during the presence of Sam Reng Si in Cambodia? Mr. Sam Reng Si? You, uh, During his uh, return. Okay, when did he return back to Cambodia? Okay. I think it's probably unlikely under our current administration in the United States that the current administration would agree to send troops on the ground, but I would guess that there would be diplomatic pressure to respond to the violence, if, if there is violence on the part of the government to reduce that violence or stop that violence. And that would be not only the US government, but other governments of the world would be very concerned if violence were to break out. <laughs>
another question from the fan too. But this is real. But he's going to Cambodia with some Ramsey. He said, we have only one passport. Is this considered one citizenship or dual citizen? I would recommend that anyone with questions talk to an immigration lawyer. I'm not an immigration lawyer or an expert on what the passport requirements would be and all of that. Um, so I would recommend somebody get a, get a referral to talk to an immigration lawyer and I could make a referral if that's helpful. Yeah, thank you, Amy. Uh, I have another question regarding uh, dictatorship, uh, dictator. And based on the history, but you know, and we all of us know, that dictator won't leave the power until he or she uh, brought down to the knee. So in this case, that if there's a way that uh, they keep the promise, 173, 73 promises, that, that will be a very good uh, for all of us, so we don't have to stay to war or anything. Uh, but based on the Cambodian Constitution and Paris, uh, PPA Paris Peace uh, Agreement, uh, it's supposed to have democracy in uh, the article, but somehow he violated all this and he keep violating again and again, till he get away, and there are no punishment. And regarding the EBA, so I hope that uh, the European uh, 28 countries uh, will put pressure on that. Uh, so get back to the dictators. Uh, you have any, uh, any, uh, any dictators who give up the powers? Uh, uh, Based on the respect the human rights of democracy, so that's my question. And thank you for. Okay, Okun, Emi, Evan, you put me on the radio. So no, 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 I'll point again to Ethiopia as an example. Um, there wasn't a coup d'etat in Ethiopia. The Prime Minister Melisanawi, who was in power until a year and a half ago, was a dictator. They had one party rule in Ethiopia, just like they have one party rule in Cambodia. But people, it was actually a student-led movement. Students started peacefully protesting in 2014. They were met with violence on the part of the police and the army. There were people killed, people expelled from school, but the student protest expanded and moved across the country. More and more people started speaking out risking their lives, being thrown in prison, but from 2014 to 2018, the Prime Minister realized that he could no longer sustain himself in power, and he stepped down, and a new Prime Minister was elected. And that Prime Minister, as soon as he was elected, expressed his support for human rights. And it wasn't just expressing his support for human rights, the, the Nobel Peace Prize Committee recognized it just two weeks ago, that it was genuine efforts that he made in Ethiopia to resolve uh, a long-standing long war with Eritrea, but also to bring reconciliation and peace to Ethiopia. So there are examples of things happening in recent history. And it's in part due to pressures inside the country, people starting to speak out, 
but also from pressure outside the country from the diaspora to make sure that the people in the country feel like they are supported, to feel like the world is paying attention. It's particularly hard when there isn't a free media, when there's no free journalism, no, not a free press. It's hard for people to know that they're being heard, and so it's important for people outside the country to find out what's going on and to publicize it. In Ethiopia, one thing that was really important is here in Minneapolis, there's a TV station called Aromia Media News. It's a diaspora TV station that produced all their news here in Minnesota and broadcast it by satellite into Ethiopia. And that was the way a lot of people in Ethiopia got news about what was happening. It came from different sources in Ethiopia to Minnesota, became a news program, and then the news program was broadcast back into Ethiopia. So it was really the diaspora helping to support freedom of the press, <coughs> make sure people had access to information. And people got that information, learned about the protests, joined the protest movement, and really put pressure from inside on their government to change. So it is possible um, to take down a dictator without war, without shots being fired, without a coup d'etat, from pressure within the country and pressure from outside the country. Let's see what you can tell I'm not certified to do it. มีนะดําไปยืนยืนในอนาคตในการนั้นยิงอุทยานมือที่รัฐบาลเราประเทศอุทยานเนี่ยนะประเทศประเทศมุ่งที่จะเนี่ยเอาการดําเนินรายการโ
bọn hắn dốn từ ọt vô thà ọt chấn cư ọt à nấu chỗ nấu dù bàn đây tất tạm tình trong kết đó bọn hắn dù bọn thà chú đó sắp thân hay xe tự kết rõ thật bọn chú đó sắp ngay nâng bàn chân chú ý thật ca khả năng tư ở đây tại nhóm khởi tật ta thường mách phải tóc xài của chân bàn bố dốn vì ọt sâu thông ý khả năng cả lạc tất sạc tình trong kết đó nâng This is what I think, but you can help me if I make a mind at all. I think that um, Hun Sen still stay in power until now, not just the Vietnamese helping him, but I think Chinese that, that give him a lot of money that, that uh, make him sustain and, uh, his power for a long time. So then how, how would we uh, resolve that? China also has a lot of investments in Ethiopia, so it's not <laughs> um, it's not a dissimilar situation. But of course, each country has its own path, and I'm not saying that Cambodia will follow the same path as Ethiopia. But I want to go back to the Paris Peace Agreements and Article 15. It recognized that everyone in Cambodia shall enjoy the rights and freedoms in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights is universal. It's for everyone, everywhere. We all, because we are human beings, have the right to express our views. And if the government doesn't let us express our views, then it's just a matter of time and persistence that we will be able to express our views. And the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is recognized by all of the countries in the world as the basic underlying principles of human rights. The governments of Cambodia, Vietnam, and China all agree that these are human rights. Our job is to show them and convince them what they need to change to respect those human rights. But you know better than I do, or Ethiopians do, how to persuade and convince the people in power in Cambodia to respect those rights. Something that works in Ethiopia might not work in Cambodia. But there are a lot of smart Cambodians who can figure out how to get the government to do what it needs to do to respect human rights and keep its promises. And the advocates for human rights and a lot of governments in the world stand ready to help you do what we think what you think we need to do.
States and to hear talk about your government leaders being manipulated by governments of other countries, that, uh, something sounds very familiar. Uh, so um, one thing is it's important to expose the truth. We need to make sure that we outside of Cambodia know the truth and then to make sure that that truth gets to the people in Cambodia mm -hmm. so that they know who is influencing their government. So they know who is making the decisions. Is it the people of Cambodia and their elected officials or is it elected officials or non-elected officials in other countries that are controlling the government? If that is exposed, then that shows whether the government is legitimate. Because one of the principles in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is that the people have the right to participate in the political life of their country. They have the right to elect their officials, to, to elect their leaders. And if the people of Cambodia are not able to elect people to represent them, then that's a violation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So we need to expose what the truth is so that we can find out what the human rights issues are and what the human rights violations are and then ensure that changes are made so that human rights are respected. So that means that those promises that I read, that I read to you, that there will be full participation in elections those need to be a reality. And other governments expect that if, because it was a promise that the government of Cambodia made to allow the political opposition to fully participate in the elections. So then other governments are going to expect that to happen or, or, and are going to want to help the, the Cambodian government make that happen. Because they made those promises. They didn't have to. They chose to make those promises to the world and so the governments of the world and the United Nations and civil society organizations are going to say, you promised, now you need to deliver. So it, there's no easy solution to it, but I think exposing the truth is the first step. And then turning to how we get from the reality to what human rights require is the next step. And that's, the, that's a harder step. But I think we can be supportive in that role outside of Cambodia and help support the people in Cambodia to help that happen and help support the government to keep its promise too. 
It's not us against the government. The government made this promise. Now let's help the government get to keeping its promise. That means governments of one country and governments of different countries review each other as equals. It's a truth about international human rights work that there's no police force that is going to go and enforce these promises. 
Sometimes shame can be a motivating factor for governments. Does the government of Cambodia in 2024 want to come back to Geneva to say, oh, we lied? If that happens in 2024, there will be a lot of very angry governments. Why did you lie to us in 2019? After all, we gave you the choice in 2019. You could have said no. And if if you were lying to us in 2019, you're probably lying to us again in 2024. Politicians usually don't like to admit to lying. <laughs> there are always exceptions to that rule. <laughs> 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 My question is, is the question regarding with the International Criminal Court. Uh, if the leader who commit egregious human rights violation, what uh, anything that the ICC could do? Um, the International Criminal Court is a controversial issue in the United States as well as in other parts of the world. <laughs> Usually, a government has to agree to be subject to the jurisdiction of the ICC for its leaders to be held accountable under the ICC. That means the government has to ratify something called the Rome Statute that recognizes the competency of the International Criminal Court. Even if a government ratifies the ICC or the Rome Statute, it is effective only going forward, not looking back before the date of ratification. And I apologize, I don't know for certain whether Cambodia has ratified the Rome Statute. I can look on my phone. I'm guessing it hasn't. Um, there is another way an action can come in front of the ICC, and that's by a vote of the Security Council. But the way the voting in the Security Council works is the permanent members have a veto, and that includes China can veto any decision. So 
So in short, unless Cambodia has ratified the Rome Statute, the ICC is probably not a viable alternative, not a viable choice. <coughs> ปลายปีอะไรนั้นนะกว่าปกป้องแต่ไว้ให้ตรงนี้ตรงนี้จองว่าให้เราปีกว่าปลายปูนทําไมนะท่านอาจารย์สลับเอาให้ตัวเฉ
เนี่ยตำนองสำนองโปรจะอยู่ประเทศแคนาดาเรื่องอายประมงพอตาในบ้านเราไปเจาะตัวในประเทศแคนาดาเนี่ย So I didn't get down the first question. I'll answer the second and third, and then we can go back. You can remind me of the first question. ช่างสมุทรมุ้ยมันจะบานให้ตอนนั้นช่างชาวบ้านมันจะไปจำต้อยหลับไปสมุทรมุ้ย So regarding Ethiopia. The current prime minister is a member of the monolithic ruling political party, um, but he has opened up. He there were some political parties that were banned, labeled terrorist organizations. He took away that terrorist label, and so he is allowing other political parties to exist and to participate in political life in Ethiopia. So even though he's in the ruling political party from before. He has a reformist attitude, and his steps so far, he's released thousands of political prisoners. He's allowed these old political parties to come back and participate. So he's he's reforming. Um, regarding Canada, and and this applies to a lot of these promises that the Cambodian government made. Um, a really important yeah, aspect yeah, of yeah. human rights work is some, what we call fact finding. Man. Man. And gathering information about what's happening on the ground in yeah, a country like Cambodia, um, and that may mean reaching out to the government of Canada for help with that. Um, it may mean reaching out to other governments for help with fact finding, and it may mean drawing on civil society, diaspora groups, to do that fact finding. But it's a very important thing that needs to be happening from now until 2024 and ongoing. There needs to be a constant effort at gathering information, especially because there isn't a free and independent press in Cambodia. So it's up to us, it's up to all of us, and it's up to any contacts we have with people who can travel to Cambodia, people who are in Cambodia and can communicate with us safely to help share with the world what's actually happening in Cambodia. So now I'm going to ask you to repeat your first question that I forgot. Uh, regarding to uh, dual citizens. Uh, okay. Yes. Well, the question okay. is, how do I know I'm a dual yes, citizen? Yes, yes. Okay. So I I'm not an expert in this yes. area of law. My understanding is, if you came to the United States as a refugee, I don't think you're recognized as being a dual citizen of the of the country you had to flee because you were a refugee. So if you came as a refugee from Cambodia. I think, and and you should check with an immigration lawyer to verify this. But I think you're no longer considered to be a ci citizen of Cambodia because that was the country that was persecuting you that you had to flee. Um, so, but but it's important to for your situation might be a little bit different from the typical situation. I encourage you to consult with an immigration attorney. We have immigration attorneys at the Advocates for Human Rights. You could come and talk with one of my colleagues. And they probably have the easy answers to your questions. It's just not my specialty. I apologize. Thank you. ยังเทียมมันก็ทราบไปจากที่มันจะทุสก็ได้ยังมีสิ่งที่เป็นเด็กมันยังจะช่วยเทียมอะไรกันยังมีสิ่งที่เราไม่กันแต่เทียมส่